Welcome to your Sprinkled with Hope podcast, and this is your host, Jason. And today, Shane and I are going to take a little different avenue, but we also want to you know, tell you why it's important to talk about this particular subject and what it has to do with hope, because you might be wondering about this particular topic. But I think it's very valuable and very, uh, you know, relatable to what hope actually is. Shane and I always hope to go on the next vacation to the next place. So we're going to kind of shake things up a little bit. And we're going to talk about one of our favorite places to, to travel to. And that is Disneyland or Disney World. We've been to both. And so we enjoy both of those. Um, so, you know, Shane and I, we, we took a family trip with some other family members to Disneyland uh, a few years ago. It's probably been maybe six years ago or so now. But we took this trip to Disneyland and it was it was truly amazing. Like we had a great time running around the park for uh, all those days that we were there. It was right around Christmas time. So we just wanted to share some of the insights that we have about uh, either traveling to Disneyland or Disney World and just some of the things that we've experienced, some of the ways that we've created more hope and how we use that to project us to those destinations. I can tell you that this is totally unscripted. Jason and I have had literally zero time to prepare for this. So this is going to come from our heart and soul. And it's going to be raw. And what we, the reason why we wanted to talk about Disneyland specifically is that it really is a place that we love to go with our family. And I happen to be fortunate enough to have just spent uh, three weeks in Disney World separately in the last 13 months and also went to Disneyland with the very dear family and friends of ours. Um, so that's been my journey over the last 13 months to be able to spend four different trips going to Disney World and Disneyland. And I, I'm, I can honestly tell you, I'm fortunate enough to have done that, to have a wife who supports that desire for me to do that. But also it's equally important for me to share and give those um, opportunities for my children to experience those things. Um, Jason and I, when we grew up, we didn't have a lot of really grandiose um, travel experiences that we had. We, we grew up in Southern California, so we did go to Disneyland often, but it was right in our back door, basically. But our grandiose trips were a, a backpack or, or a um, tent camping. So that wasn't something that really was uh, we didn't go anywhere extravagant or things like that but it's, it's important for me to share that passion and that hope with my kids so that hopefully as they grow up and have family of their own that they have something it doesn't have to be Disneyland that's just something that I've chosen and Jason has chosen that we love to go this trip that Jason talked about uh, we decided to rent a house that was really close to Disneyland. You don't have to rent a house. You could go to a hotel or a, even Disney resort or a hotel or something like that. The reason we like to go as a family to a house is because we like to take breaks in the middle of the day to unwind, to recharge your batteries. And typically we go swimming in the swimming pool at the house and so that's something where whatever you do, whatever you decide to do to gain more hope, plan it out and schedule out certain things um, so that you can see things that you're doing and, and that will help you gain more hope, I believe. So Shane and I, we, we love talking about Disneyland. It seems like every time we're together, we're, <laughs> we're mentioning something either about Disneyland or a trip that we took or, hey, the last time you were there. How was that particular ride or whatever? So almost a year ago, exactly to the, to the month, my family was in, at Disney World and we were enjoying some, some of the, the beauty there. And it'd been, it was my first trip to Disney World and as well as my kids. Um, and so I wanted to just maybe touch on Disney World for a minute and then we'll come back to Disneyland because we spent a lot more time at Disneyland um, than Disney World except for Shane, the last 13 months has spent a fair amount of time at, 
at Disney World. Um, but you know, there is a there is a, a few differences. Um, and I just wanted to kind of touch on some of those. So at Disney World, uh, they have a few rides that soon will be coming to Disneyland. And one of those was uh Minnie and Mickey's Runaway Railway. And it's Shane and I, we love that particular ride. And I think because it, when, when we go to these places, it brings the kid out in us and Shane and I love to feel youthful. And that's what gives us more hope is that if we go to these places and, and it makes us feel this way, that we will, you know, be able to represent ourselves a little bit better. We'll feel a little younger. We'll walk 13 miles and not feel tired. Um, where on a, any other day, you walk 13 miles and I'm going to be completely exhausted. Um, but you send me into Disney world and suddenly it's not an issue anymore. <laughs> so, so Shane, what would you say uh, is one of the things that you enjoy about this particular ride, this Minnie and Mickey's runaway railway? It, it's so fun. The thing, Right off the bat, the thing that I like the most, because Goofy is my favorite um, character, I love him. I just think he he's goofy, he's funny, uh, he has a little flair, and I just love him. So he actually appears as the very first, right, as you're going on this train, he appears and he's talking. And it, <laughs> I just, that part I love, because to me, it gets me in, it, it grounds me to be, okay, Shane, you're a kid, you love Goofy. Um, and it, it really dives into the imagination. So it's part of the, the journey that you're on. And it's a mix between the imagination and, um, visual screens that you see and how they, how they take you on that journey, I think is one of the reasons why I think I love this ride the most. Yeah, it's it's pretty great. I, I do love that it, it does bring the imagination out and it just the way that they put the story together. And it's not your typical ride. You're you look like you're in this this train and then all of a sudden the train starts <laughs> splitting apart at some points and you're kind of separate and then you come back together and it's just really cool how they did it. Um, you know, how they really designed that that ride. And you know, if you're watching this behind me is the actual Disneyland or Disney world castle, um, at magic kingdom, the particular ride we're talking about as is at Hollywood studios, a, a different park, um, in Florida, they, they kind of separate them out into four different parks. And so one, you know, every time I, or the time that I went to Disney world, we actually stayed at a hotel, but Shane can probably speak a little bit better to staying on Disney property and what that actually looks like. So the place we stayed at was close enough. It was, it was about a 10 minute drive into the parks. So it wasn't, wasn't terrible. Um, but I think there's benefits to staying on Disney property. There's, and Shane can speak to that, but you know, I think that one of those that he can touch on is, is the ability to get into the park a little bit quicker, a little sooner than if you're driving from outside the park. Yeah. So in the last three times I've been there, we went, the first time I was at Disney world was, uh, I think it's been 11, 11 or 12 years, something like that. And then when we got back, you could see that we want to keep going back. So the first time that we went back, uh, we stayed at, uh, Coronado Springs and that was great because you could go to a, the park and take the bus back and this and that. Um, I've also stayed at Port Orleans French Quarter. And then the last time we went, we stayed at Port Orleans Riverside. Uh, in between those trips, we, we stayed at uh, a hot hotel that was maybe 10 minutes away. The thing I like about staying at, on a Disney resort is they extend the Disney magic to the resort. So you feel like you're part of the that whole Disney magic that I would say is part of the park it extends to the, the resort and it's down to the food and the, the room that you stay is it's all geared around that Disney magic and they're massive resorts. But I, th the thing that I like about it is you can jump on a bus at the resort. You can go to any of the parks that you want to, 
And the benefit of that is that you can get in a little bit earlier than other people. Um, so that's a huge benefit for those of you who've been to Disneyland or Disney World. You know that it's a lot of it is about timing. And so if you can get into the park before I have, we happen to be the first, the last trip we went to, we were the very first um, people on a ride at Animal Kingdom and the very first people in Epcot when we went. We weren't the first on a ride we went to that because other people were running past us. And But two times we were basically in the park right at the start. And you can't do that if you don't stay at, at a Disney resort. Yeah, and I think that, you know, I, I've often heard this and I can, I can attest to this. The first two hours of the park opening is when you're going to be able to ride the most amount of rides and experience the most amount of things as well as the last two hours of the day is the most right in the middle. You know, some people like to wake up late, so they get to the park a little bit later and then they're just worn out. So they go home because they have little, little kids or, you know, those littles, they just don't want to run around the park, you know, quite like uh, Shane and I like to do. So, so really, you know, if, if you're going to capitalize, that's why sometimes we'll take a break in the middle is to just give ourselves that, a little bit of a recharge so we can hit the first two hours and the last two and some portions of the of the middle but not feel like we're completely exhausted by the time we get there um so yeah i i really enjoyed uh disney world it was quite a different experience um than disneyland shane and i grew up going to disneyland when we were kids and so we were very familiar with disneyland so disney world's just a touch different because it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere almost there's not a nothing out around it whereas disneyland i mean you're right in the heart of anaheim right and so you're getting all of this influence from from outside yeah you know i would i was just thinking i would i would feel like a failure if i didn't mention if you go to disneyland and you're going to go on the jungle cruise <clears throat> reach out to my dear dear friend who's been a friend my lifelong friend koi he is the best jungle cruise captain you can ever imagine so if you're on that and you see him give him a hug for me shout out to him i feel like i would be a mess if i didn't mention him but i think the reason why jason and i wanted to talk about disneyland and disney world <clears throat> is simple for us it's a passion that we have and if we have our next trip planned, it's giving us something to look forward to. It's giving us that hope that we want. We've chosen this as, our, as part of our hope. We're not saying in any way that you have to be the same and you have to pick Disneyland and plan trips for that. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is that have something that you have that you look forward to that gives you hope. It could be a trip in the mountains. It could be anything, but pick that thing that is going to be your Disneyland for you as, is, as it is for us um, and, and go after that. It, it might be a trip to, to Bora Bora or, and that's a little bit more expensive than Disneyland, but plan it out, schedule it, schedule that that you're going to go on this trip and put all your energy and effort and drive to get there chances are you're going to get there just like we do with these trips we don't typically plan them we just say hey we're going to go and then somehow it works out so that's all i'm saying is <clears throat> have your disneyland and then go after it so I have a question for you, Shane, but I want, before I ask it, I, I want to ask the audience, you know, this same question. So as I am asking the audience, Shane, you can think about it, but I want to know what your, what, what is your favorite ride? If you've been to Disneyland or Disney world, what is your favorite ride and why? And you can send that to either Jason at sprinklewithhope.com or Shane at sprinklewithhope.com. We'd love to hear your input on on what it is that you enjoy about that and if you don't like disneyland that's fine you can still send us a 
hi, love you guys or whatever. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. We, we, we want, you know, that interaction with you guys um, to help spread some more hope. So feel free to reach out to us. If so, if it's not, you like to go to Disneyland, where do you like to travel to? You know, what is like your destination that you're hopeful for and looking towards? Um, so Shane, what is your favorite ride? We'll start at Disney World and then we'll go to Disneyland. So I, I would say, I, I could say it's Space Mountain, it's Big Thunder <laughs> Railroad, it's um, all of those, these really thrill rides. I love those. Don't get me wrong. Right. But the one that I think would be my favorite for both Disney World and Disneyland is a classic, has been around I think ever since they started and it's Pirates of the Caribbean. And the reason I like that one, because I want to answer the question, well, why would that trump everything else? And again, I'm not saying I I love all of them, (laughs) except the teacups. I won't go on the teacups. (laughs) But the reason why is because I grew up going to Disneyland and that was a ride that we all went on as a family. And I remember very vividly that our older brother, Troy and we would always be splashing in the water they said keep your hands and feet inside the ride at all times well we were little kids and we wouldn't so we would we'd sprinkle a little bit of water from the ride onto each other and just the the way that it transformed my imagination at the time because you see these characters moving and talking and and I didn't I didn't really see at the time a difference between real life and this animatronics. And so it transformed me into a pirate's life. And I think that's why I would say for me, that's been my favorite ride. I also like sitting back and relaxing for the 15 minutes that it's at Disneyland and the eight minutes that it's at Disney World. Um, But again, I, I love all the rides, but that would be my favorite. What would be your favorite, Jason? Oh, man. There's so many, but, uh, you you know, so at Disney world, I think it would go to, to really a newer type, ride. I mean, I love pirates of the Caribbean and I think, you know, Disneyland pirates of the Caribbean is better than, than Disney world, personal opinion. Don't hate me. Um, but I would say that it is rock and roller coaster because I love the thrill of just like going absolutely crazy and you're, I mean, it feels like you're going 80 miles an hour in that ride and it's somewhat dark. And, um, before you know it, you're like doing a upside down loop. It's a real quick one. Um, you don't even know that you're in the loop. Um, but it's just, it's just kind of cool the way that they design that. Cause again, it's at Hollywood studios. Um, and they, they designed it as if you're like going down the Hollywood freeway and you're just you know, you're blasting Aerosmith and you're just going crazy. And it, it, that was a, that was probably one of my favorites, even though like space mountain and, and pirates are, Oh, the, that that's a hard one. But yeah. Uh, so then at Disneyland, I would definitely say pirates of the Caribbean. I just, I love it. It's such a different ride at Disneyland. Yeah. It's laid back. And I like the first part of it. You're kind of like yep. in the South and, Again, this is in New Orleans Square, right? So, you know, it's all, you, you know, surrounded by, you know, that Louisiana, New Orleans type feel, you know, and so there's fireflies and the guy's rocking on his chair and stuff. And then it just goes boom right into this, <laughs> this awesome ride. And, it, and it's, it's very entertaining and it's just got, it's got a few drops, not nothing too big. So you can take littles on it. We've taken our littles when they were tiny and they love that ride. It's, it's definitely one of their favorites for sure. Yeah. One that I wish they would bring from, from Disney world to Disneyland is slinky dog dash better known as slink. (laughs) That one is so fun. I wish they, I have the perfect spot for them to put it in Disneyland. If they would just listen to me, (laughs) they could bring slinky dog and, Mickey and Minnie's runaway train. It's those, those are fun rides. And I think it would, it would throw it over the top for me. Again, I am partial to Disneyland (laughs) because we grew up there. I love, I also like Disney world, but for me, it's a little more intimate. Um, 
because Disneyland and California Adventure are really close together. You can hop if you want uh, at Disney World. That's a little bit more challenging to do because it's so big. Um, but so I, I hope they're listening to this podcast and they'll they'll take me up and move Slink over to <laughs> Disneyland. <laughs> I'll tell you where it needs to go if they ever call me. <laughs> well, it's interesting you say that because I know that there's been talk of them rearranging some of the downtown Disney stuff and then actually taking out, um, was it Pixar Pier? I think that that hotel mm-hmm. um, to increase the park size because they have a couple of uh, other ideas. So I think that was the last thing I heard was Pixar Pier. The hotel was going to go away and they were going to put something else there. And just kind of reduce the amount of, you know, Disneyland property yeah. hotels. But they're they are bringing uh, Minnie and Mickey's Runaway Railway to Disneyland. It'll be back in what is now known as Two Town. I don't know if it's going to stay that, or if they're going to change that whole thing. I yeah. don't know. But that's where it's going. Is is back in Toontown. Town. So yeah, tell us tell us your favorite ride at either either um disney world or disneyland you can share it at jason at sprinklewithhope.com or shane at sprinklewithhope.com we'd love to hear from you we love interacting with our guests i mean uh, sorry our host our our listeners that's who you are um this was unscripted again remember (laughs) got a little jumbled but you can tell that jason and i are passionate about this and again i want to point out that We're not asking you to be passionate about this thing. We want you to be passionate about something in life, whatever it is, and then do that thing. Do whatever it is that that thing, and don't do the other things that are going to distract you from getting to that thing that you want. I promise you that it will give you more hope and a better outlook on life. It just will. And I can say that because it gives me the same thing that, uh, that I know it will give you. We, we know that passion and hope and desire are important in life. And so that's the message that we want to give you today is that find that thing and go after that. Absolutely. So that's our message today is find your Disneyland or your thing. It could be Hawaii. It could be taking a family trip to Yellowstone. It could be, you know, I'm not sure what that looks like for you or if you're in a different country, you know, what is that thing? Cause I knew, no, they have Disneyland parks outside of the U S so go to Paris or Hong Kong or wherever you want to go. Um, but find that thing and, and just go after it and, and, you know, make those memories. Cause that's what, that's what you're going to have, you know, my kids, they still to this day always talk, oh man, remember that trip we took to Disneyland with Shane and, and our, you know, our other brother, Troy and their family. It was so fun. We should do that again. And they keep talking about it. So find that thing that you love to do and do that. 